In these videos, we'll talk about hypothesis testing. The methods we've talked about already, namely summary statistics, visualization, as well as other methods like clustering and even some simple model fitting, allow us to explore a data set. This phase of data analysis is sometimes called exploratory data analysis. We formulate ideas about the system from which our data came based on the analysis of that data. Another common mode of analysis, known as confirmatory data analysis or hypothesis testing, allows us to directly answer questions using data. That is, during the data exploration or through some other means, we formulate a specific question about the system. We could even run an experiment specifically to test a particular idea, isolating the key variable and gathering very specific data relevant to that question. The formal framework of hypothesis testing is how we evaluate these ideas. While formal hypothesis testing is most common in medicine and experimental science, and maybe less often thought of as part of data science, the techniques of hypothesis testing are still key for data scientists to understand, and concepts like significance and power are crucial. When doing hypothesis testing, there's a general plan. First, we have a fairly well-defined question about a system. For example, we want to know how effective a new treatment for a disease is. Next, we construct a null hypothesis, H0, which is a statement of the default position. For the case of the new drug, the null hypothesis would say that the drug has no effect. The logical opposite to the null hypothesis is the so-called alternative hypothesis, so the drug has an effect. Note that we don't say the drug cures the disease. When it comes to hypothesis testing, we have to be very careful about our language. Usually, the null hypothesis says something like, the observations arise from chance, or there is no difference between the two treatments, and the alternative hypothesis is then something to the effect of, the observations did not arise by chance, or there is a difference between two treatments. Hopefully some examples will make it a bit clearer. Say we have a new drug that we believe cures the common cold. Our null hypothesis is that the drug has no effect, and therefore the alternative is that the drug does have an effect. Another example is court. We believe that there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty of a crime. In the legal system, the default position is innocence until proven otherwise. Therefore, the null hypothesis is innocent and the alternative is guilt. Note that we don't prove you're guilty, rather we rule that it is implausible that you're innocent. A binary situation like this is in some ways ideal for hypothesis testing. If there are only two possible outcomes and one is ruled out, then we can say something very precise. A final common example is where we have collected two data sets and we think they come from different populations, say something like rates of diabetes in different income brackets. The null hypothesis is that whatever characteristic we've measured is the same for both populations, and the alternative hypothesis is that they're different. We can't say exactly what that difference is, only that it exists. In this case, we will try to make our two samples as similar as possible in every respect except for the variable of interest, so that if we rule out the null, then there is nothing else that could cause a difference except the chosen characteristic. The aim of hypothesis testing is therefore to rule out the null hypothesis. If the null is, the effect is indistinguishable from random chance, ruling out the null does not confirm that the treatment caused the effect, it only confirms that an effect occurred. For example, you've probably heard of the placebo effect. If we take people with a medical condition and give them a pill with no active ingredients, sometimes they can still see an improvement in their condition. If we had given them a new experimental drug instead and seen the same improvement, we might be misled into believing that the new drug caused the improvement. The issue here is experimental design. We need to isolate as precisely as possible the effect being tested. Usually we do this by having two or more groups who should experience close to identical conditions. The only difference should be the presence or absence of the active ingredient. Identical conditions here means that both groups should be visiting a doctor and swallowing a pill. The placebo effect is real, but a careful analysis of clinical trials where placebos were administered, which I'll link on the course page, found that in cases where there was a binary outcome there was no placebo effect. In cases where there was a continuous outcome, for example, doctors often ask patients to rate their pain on a scale from 1 to 10, they found that there was a placebo effect. One possible cause of this is that patients can reinterpret their pain, for example, describing it as uncomfortable tingling instead of pain. Less known is the opposite of the placebo effect, the nocebo effect. This is when an inert substance causes an adverse effect. Typically, this will manifest as people experiencing side effects from drugs, which are not actually caused by the drugs themselves. An example is from this study, where patients were administered with a hair loss drug. One group was informed that it caused erectile dysfunction and the other was not. The group who was informed were significantly more likely to experience the side effects, 45% compared to 15% in the control group. That's three times the rate of side effects due to the power of suggestion alone. To summarise, the aim of hypothesis testing is to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. In a binary situation, like in court, rejecting the null, for example by rejecting the hypothesis that you're innocent, lets us conclude the only alternative, i.e. that you're guilty. 
In general, however, failing to reject the null does not prove that nothing happened. That is, we can't prove you're innocent. It's important to reflect on this for a moment. Let's say we did an experiment to test the effect of an expensive new ad campaign and found that those who saw the ad were no more likely to buy our product than those who didn't see it. Does that mean that the campaign failed and the ad was ineffective? Possibly. But if the ad had only a small effect and we only tested, say, 10 people, we might have been unlucky in some sense. This leads us on to the important notion of statistical significance, which lets us quantify these things and is the subject of the next video.